is the state of Georgia getting out a theory that is not based in fact and it should not come into this courtroom. I'm moving for a mistrial. I have no idea why this gentleman got to say, I mean, we presume this. He has no right to say that. He played Does the preamble say why sell? Preamble. Does the preamble answer my question, please? Sure, the preamble does, but okay. not All right. Not Day 75 of the Young Thug YSL RICO trial was interesting. Detective Racy testifies to the Lil Wayne bus shooting. Thug's lawyer then goes on a huge rant saying this trial was unfair and moves for a mistrial. Brian steals a mic drop moment at the end of this video. I'm not at my normal setup, so sorry about that, but hit subscribe, here we go. First look at Thug on day 75 in this nice red suit, eating with his dreads down, looking snazzy. I'm at my mom's house, that's why the setup looks different, but I'm gonna try my best across the country, let's go. Brian steals objecting to the cell phone records coming in and the state needs a cell phone data expert for them to be able to introduce this evidence. I think it's Detective Gracie, they want to introduce it, but it's not, he's saying it's not good enough. They need a real expert, like in the Melly trial. We're gonna use Agent Bernie's information through Detective Racy or a Agent Racy now, and have him testify to location data, and then come in later, I guess, over objection, and now try to bolster that testimony or make it cumulative. And I'm not so sure that Agent Bernie even did this analysis that Detective, in fact, I, we were never given it, that Detective Racy is talking about. So it is really fresh testimony, that's expert testimony. I would object. It looks like the mapping of cell phone, failed telephone calls doesn't require expert testimony. Testimony concerning cell phone records, abbreviations, locations of, of the defendant based on a map of cell phone, power locations doesn't require expert testimony. But it does say that Henderson distinguishes between expert testimony about how cell towers operate, which would require expert testimony. The how is why they would need an expert. So the judge is going to let it in. He doesn't give a shit, like always. He said, make your objection, so I'd like to object. Now, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll give you a continued objection. Um, so they added an additional five jail calls as announced. Um, I'm objecting to the late notice of all five. Now he's objecting to jail calls of Pee Wee Roscoe, the guy that got convicted of the Lil Wayne bus shooting. I'm sure the state is trying to connect Thug to this. They're going to be connecting phone numbers that Pee Wee called people in the day of the shooting and shit. So you'll see this soon. If I'm on my phone, I'm looking at information about the trial. The court said that you already ruled on admissibility. I'm still objecting to the non-testifying yes. people there. I'm going to overrule your objection. I'll notice continue objection okay. still has a continuing objection over these jail calls but he's gonna let him in anyway detective racy about to be on the stand now i'm currently employed at the bureau of alcohol tobacco firearms and explosives about four years now uh, june 2020 is when i joined the agency i'm a special agent in a criminal enforcement group uh meaning just enforcing the federal criminal laws uh prior to atf i was employed by the cobb county police department here in georgia approximately 12 and a half years with the call detail records that you've received have you had the occasion to plot um cell phone tower information based upon the call detail records that you received absolutely yeah, foundation. oh rule sir so we have crime analysts that have access to um, basically other tools, systems, uh, computer programs that would help plot that data as well. We, so if I had the raw data and I was looking at it initially, I didn't use a computer program. I did it myself. So what I would do is look at, depends on the cell phone provider um, that we're discussing, but sometimes it come back as an Excel document with different columns and it would give you different information. Sometimes depending on the provider it would come up, not as a Word document, but kind of like a PDF and it would give you the same data, but stylistically different on the return, depending on which company you got, depending on how easy it was to, to plot the data. Um, but I would just take on some of them, the latitude and longitude that was provided there for that cell tower and put it simply into Google. The lawyer is going to have a field day on cross-examination with him doing it himself. And I know we've been using the term plotting. So that's just taking that data and again, putting it like on a map, utilizing Google or utilizing one of those systems like Radius Draw or one of those computer programs. And then it would just basically place like pin drops. Like if you had a cell phone and you just drop the pin. So the Atlanta police sergeant basically had a piece of paper that he had names on. Um, and he handed that to me. So again, interviewed the people that were involved, um, looked at the tour buses, uh, a crime scene tech responded out with me, I requested a crime scene tech. I discussed the, what we had with that crime scene tech. She photographed the scene for me while I was standing there. Um, we were able to walk on, Alvin Lewis gave us permission to walk on his tour bus. Can't believe we're still talking about the Lil Wayne tour bus shooting. Uh, crime scene tech or detectives gonna take overall photos and then basically move their way in. So overall, medium. We already looked at all these photos with the other detective. I guarantee we're gonna get some cumulative objections from a lawyer here. We from look at these exact it's ones. It's to show us the damage. No one cares. We already saw these pictures of this boss, dude. Any further objections, Mr. Steele? All right, I'm gonna overrule your objections, sir. The judge being a little bitch today, like always. I learned that there was a uh, ongoing beef or ongoing dispute, um, go basically multiple violent crimes um, going back and forth between two groups, um, and that this incident may be associated with those previous incidents. Was there anyone specifically who could potentially assist you with this investigation? Uh, investigator Dennis and Gaither both, but primarily I would say Investigator Dennis. And after leaving this meeting, did you develop a potential suspect in this case? Yes, we did. Who was that suspect? Uh, Mr. Jimmy Winfrey. Were you able to find, where did you go look to go find uh, surveillance video? So Brady Avenue, we went to the club and then uh, basically walked that whole block the intersections around there in 2015 even all these businesses around here no one got any footage it should almost be mandatory for businesses to have working cameras i feel like no i didn't see any businesses with surveillance cameras that would assist no depending on what i was doing that day we would task each other out kind of thing so i think investor dennis was able to capture some video where did he capture video from 
Your Honor, he has about his investigation, which comes from. Oh, objection. Judge has overruled everything from the defense today. We called it the vault, like a recording studio, but it was on uh, Metropolitan Avenue. I don't remember the numbers, but. And did that video assist in your investigation? Yes. Depicted vehicles that were possibly involved in this incident, basically kind of meeting up and traveling together in a group. The video he's talking about was them leaving the studio. Kenneth Copeland led them to that studio to get those videos too. So Kenneth Copeland is a f***ing snitch. Why is hell Woody? So we learned that he was associated with one of the groups that had an ongoing dispute with the victims, at least Mr. Little Wayne, uh, Mr. Dwayne Carter. Um, for the Mr. Lil Wayne uh, had a vehicle or operated a vehicle that generally met the description one of the vehicles involved in the shooting on the interstate. Were you ever able to get a phone number for Mr. Winfrey? Yes, we were. So they tracked his phone 100%. For search warrant for call detail record and um, historical cell site data. Same shit that happened to Melly. Melly's phone was tracked around with the car with the dead bodies in it. The cell site data can provide uh, somewhat geographical location information. And it's not completely accurate. It's like a radius, this on a map, like a mile or two or whatever. Uh, it would help us at least rule him out as a suspect or rule him in as a suspect. So this is a disc. Uh, that contains the cell phone records um, to the records that we're talking about. So this is uh, basically like kind of like the subscriber information. They're just some information from Sprint. We have mostly subscriber information and data about the device and the account that the legal process was on. At, and after reviewing um, the records, did you find any information that assisted with your investigation? Yes. Before we go on, um, Madam, I have it on good authority. We need to take it. Ladies and gentlemen, um, let's take 10 minutes. I just got to go jerk off out back, dude. What information did you find that assisted in your investigation? Um, ingoing, outgoing calls and location information as well. Location history. All right. So let's first talk about the location history. When we talk about the location history, are you <clears throat> referencing plotting the calls? That's correct. And did you plot the calls yourself initially? Yes. Lawyer's going to have a field day with that. And after you plotted the calls, did you give it to your analyst, as you talked about earlier, to um, plot as well? Yes. They got a double check. I see. Yes. Sustained an objection, but I couldn't hear it because there's no f***ing microphones in this goddamn courtroom for some reason. Specifically, as it relates to these calls, did your analyst plot these specific calls in addition to you? Yes, that specific time frame, just to see if Mr. Winfrey, his cell phone, at least with the cell phone we associated with him, uh, was in the area. I'm going to be honest, boys. This detective's testimony is better than Detective Dennis so far. It's more concise and straight to the point. Detective Dennis was f terrible last week. You can go watch my old videos from last week. He sucks. Here we go. Miss Hilton's writing it all out. 138. So the cell tower was uh, in the area of Metropolitan Avenue, the vault studio, generally. Is he calling multiple phone numbers in this time frame or just one specific number? I have to look, ma'am. So their phones are tracked at their uh, studio between 12.30 and 1.30 in the morning. And then now Pee Wee Roscoe's phone is tracked. So he's calling multiple numbers, but uh, I'd say half are the same 1990 phone number that we're dealing with. And there's looks like some other phone numbers mixed in as well. Pee Wee's already convicted of the shooting. The real question is, did Young Thug instruct him to do this? We're going to see if they prove that or not. If this is in furtherance of why sell to take out Lil Wayne. So the cell tower is located uh, at 285 in Atlanta Road. So just... The other one was Atlanta Road near 285. This one is a little bit more towards the intersection. They got this dumbass tracked from the studio to the club, then followed the bus onto the highway. It's going to be that same 1990. So the 404 583 1990. Who's this 1990 number? I want to know. I would imagine they're going to put names to all these numbers. So the cell tower for that call is the Mandarin Oriental Hotel. Wait, they got Pee Wee Roscoe tracked to the hotel where Lil Wayne went after the bus was shot up. So now she's writing out all the numbers he contacted in this whole time frame. I do kind of agree with Brian Steele that this guy isn't really qualified to go into depth about the call detail records. He can talk about it since he's the one that plotted them and he had someone double check it too, but I still feel like they need an expert up there that like how the Melly trial, they had a real expert for call detail records, an FBI agent. Cell phone in your name, you my property in your name, you register, whatever, they're pulling data from multiple sources, they're kind of aggregating in one location. Um, so just doing a search through that can give you potential leads. Um, searching police databases, um, such as like our records management systems, whether it's COBS or given to Atlanta, that can provide us with people who've listed that phone number in an accident report or incident report. Um, and doing a simple Google search on a phone number can sometimes yield who the uh, owner of the phone is um, or search warrant on the phone numbers to target. And did you um, get search warrants for any of these phone numbers um, listed on the board? For some of the phone numbers, not all the phone numbers. Uh, I identified it as uh, an attorney's phone number. Called an attorney that night? Was bro panicking? Like, bro, I just shot this fucking bus. Now for the war for the other numbers, did you get search warrants for all the other numbers? I don't know for all of those. Um, I did subpoenas for some, and I know I did subpoenas and search warrants for others. It's the subscriber information. And like the account name, the account holder, like who's going to be the registered user. Sometimes there's a contact phone number or email address associated with that person. So the name, first name listed is YSL Enterprises. And did they have a name associated with the YSL Enterprises? There was a contact name listed, yes. Who, who was the contact name? Amina Diop, A-M-I-N-A, Diop, D-I-O-P. I think that's Thug's, like, one of Thug's managers or something. The phone number belonged to Jim Winfrey contacting the night on the morning of the shooting. Correct. Some of the records, we did recover a name that was associated with it. And what was that name? Brian Williams. And in your investigation, did you learn of a Brian Williams? Yes. Did Brian Williams have a nickname? He did. What was that? Birdman. That makes contact, the Jim Winfrey phone number, 
at 317 to 326 on April 26, 2015. That's correct. After the time of the shooting at 317, that number calls Jimmy Winfrey's phone number. Birdman called him right after the shooting. That's suspect on Birdman's side. So now we'll call at 314. Is there also a call at 314 to that YSL phone number? That is correct. Do you know who's actually holding the phone in here? No, we have information who the subscriber is provided from the cell phone provider. And then we also have whatever other information, circumstantial or direct from the investigation. And I guess it's safe to say, did you listen to Jimmy Winfrey's phone calls while he was in custody? I did. And in listening to his phone calls, did Jimmy Winfrey ever confirm with anyone that he actually spoke with Birdman? Yes, he does. So it looks like they're trying to admit the jail calls that Pee Wee Roscoe did to, apparently he was on the phone with Birdman at one point. He probably called some lawyers or some YSL people or something. So let's see. <coughs> certification came from another individual specifically former the brian still has been objecting saying certification he got from someone else so apparently he got it from gaither i think judge overall steals objection like always all day today at&t ysl enterprises diving into first jimmy winfrey's phone records i then dove into the 1990 because that was a frequent phone, the most frequent phone call um, made and then from going from the 1990 looking at the phone numbers that that was calling that's how it led me to these phone numbers who did you secure arrest warrant for? jimmy winfrey so at the time i secured the arrest warrant um we learned that jimmy winfrey um, was out of state in Miami, Florida. I attempted to get, I got the arrest warrant and 30 minutes later, I proceeded to the magistrate court of Cobb County to request a sealing order to have it sealed. Um, so the arrest warrant wouldn't be made public. Two things I just wanna to bring to the court's attention just to see if there's any objections so we can deal with it. The first thing is a video. Um, it's a social media video that Detective Racy pulled. This video was provided back on April 12th, back on April 12th as a part of the pool of evidence that we intended to introduce during this case, a video of Mr. Winfrey at the gun race shooting what appears to be an AR um, assault rifle. Uh, we have not heard any objections to that video, but I wanted to bring it to the court's attention that we do plan on getting into that video. They don't need to show that. He's already been convicted of the shooting. It has third party commentary. So we redacted the third party commentary and solely focused on uh, Mr. Um, Winfrey at the shooting range. So that's the first item that I want to bring to the court's attention. Okay, what's the relevancy of the Mr. Winfrey's um, range video? Because he's the one to alleged to have shot up this bus um, in this case. And so it shows him at the range um, shooting a weapon that we believe to be um, what was used in this instance um, as the test testimony or the evidence provided that um, Detective Finney saw um, this type of weapon inside of his vehicle prior to, on the night of, prior to the shooting. Um, you can hear someone that we believe to be Mr. Um, Williams encouraging uh, Mr. Winfrey to shoot the weapon at the range. And so one, it would show association, two, it would show that he knew how to shoot and fire that weapon. And three, um, it was a type of weapon that he was seen with um, on the night of. This is a little bit of a reach. Like he, it could be any weapon. It could just look similar. She said the cops saw the exact weapon. Like, no, bitch, you don't know the exact weapon. It could just be a similar weapon. All these Atlanta motherfuckers are the same. How do they know it's thug in the background? You know, he pled guilty to this incident. I don't know why we need a picture of him at a shooting range to prove that he can fire a weapon. That's one. Two, I never, to my knowledge, in your trial, I never heard anyone make an allegation he couldn't fire a weapon. He's objecting not relevant, waste of time, 403 violation. There's Pee Wee Roscoe with the gun. Go rip. Let it rip. Oh wait, that's Thug. That's definitely Thug's voice. He said let it rip, I think. <laughs> this is definitely prejudicial. Like what? And we believe that the individual says go rap it, let it rip. Uh, is Mr. Williams Sharana. Okay, if I'm saying correctly, you don't know when it was made. We know that the video was received. You know when it was posted, motherfucker. They don't know shit when these videos are made. After Mr. Winfrey was in custody. The question is, when was the video made? Do you know when the video was made? Don't guess. No. Okay. We do All not right. know when the video was made. We right. know it was made prior to his arrest. Not probative, but it has to be substantially more prejudicial, Your Honor. Him shooting the gun is not substantially more prejudicial um, than probative in this case. Again, when the thought in theory is that one, Mr. Williams was in Baton Rouge when this occurred. I imagine that the defense is going to be that Mr. Williams had nothing to do with any of this. The state still has to prove this act and the association of all these individuals as a part of the enterprise. This is another piece of evidence. Again, we know it's prior to Winfrey being um, arrested. When I look at the video, uh, when he was arrested, he had similarly styled dreads. See this evidence and then make a determination at that point. I don't think so. Not with, not with what I've heard so far. I think you got, I think the defense's argument about a 403 problem is the court's concern. The judge is in favor of the defense for once, the 403. Not saying that it may not be relevant for other purposes, given what I've heard so far, I, I, I would probably decline to admit it at this point. Not saying I wouldn't at some point, but not at this point. And is of course concerned the date of when the video I got was I have a couple concerns about it. We don't know the date. It's marginally relevant, and it's got a, it's, you've got some 403 problems. Certainly the motion for severance, yes. Okay, all right, okay. Uh, oh, and, and a couple of other things. <clears throat> motion for severance, number one. So he wants to get his client in the yellow shirt to the left of him off this trial because I don't think his client's been brought up really at all. The fact that it's admissible as a statement of a party opponent 
means that it is just admissible against that person, not everybody else and not Mr. Nick. But what if it's also admissible as a, as a, since it's a co-conspiracy, since uh, they're charged in count one? That's great. Remember at the beginning of this trial, the state was supposed to give us everything they were going to admit as an 801 D2E statement. They gave us three. This isn't one of them. And I would object to this being admitted as a co-conspirator statement under 801 D2E. I do not think it is, um, it is in furtherance of any conspiracy, number one. And we weren't provided with this. We didn't litigate it before. The jury doesn't know that it's being admitted against Mr. Winfrey because it's his statement as a party opponent, even though he is not here, or that it's just being admitted if it is being admitted over objection against Mr. Williams. This f***ing trial is a shit show. This f***ing goddamn conspiracy bullshit, dude. What a disaster. If they were going to move to admit my client's Instagram records or anything else, I'm going to ask that we be specific about what we're admitting as opposed to just admitting the entire record. Dude, Instagram records could be hundreds of thousands of pages, so I see his issue here that he wants to narrowed it down. I think Melly's Instagram records were 400,000 pages. Why are you looking to do kind of what you similarly did here, which is just, you know, the relevant portions? Yeah, I think that that's the part that's missing here, Your Honor. When we introduce the entire record, we have to introduce the entire record to say what excerpts we come from, what excerpts came from those records. Mr. Shar says his concern is we'll just be able to get up and talk about parts of the record. But if the court hasn't admitted that portion, I haven't admitted that portion or if we haven't talked about it within the confines of the evidence coming out, then that can't be brought up in closing or some other portion. Now, as it relates to Jimmy Winfrey, the call that you received, were they solely from his pen or did you search from using phone numbers and get other calls that were not on his pen. I did both. This first call is Pee Wee Roscoe and his aunt. Where the car is, they want it, they want to want it moved. All right, on next part of Well, I thought the Richard, but well, Richard don't know who got the key. No, nah, the key in Milwaukee. You can go in my room and get the extra key. But then what I want you to do, uh, call the man from the village, she'll tell her, right? Yeah, and tell Richard, uh, take the car out there, I want that tailor, uh, and I put my stomach eyes on it. No, you don't want to do nothing after that car because Bank of America is looking for it. For what? Do you forget how dead? Oh, yeah, okay, okay. So what, we need to turn the car in? We told you, and we definitely need to turn it in now. All right, we, uh, you want to wait back it up? We'll go there and do it. Well, I'll see what Rich, uh, uh, I'll go back down and look for the key, so Rich, y'all can do it. Bank of America thing. You don't need to be saying too much shit because they recording everything you say. I know there ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm just asking what's going on. Okay. You're right by what you're saying, but you're like, I'm doing something different. I'm not going nowhere. Okay, well, whatever. I'm just trying to tell you they record everything you say. I know that. Fine. His own aunt telling him not to talk on the jail calls, but he ends up talking at some point. So he got a Bank of America car loan. He's trying to hide it from the so it doesn't get repoed. The discussion of uh, the vehicle that we believed was involved in the incident at hand. Yeah, I'm going to my car. I'm going to take it to my brother's house. Some of the effect of wanting to move the car to the, like the auntie's address. And why was that important to you? Well, I mean, we're trying to, if, if I was trying to recover the vehicle, I need to know where it's at to be recovered. Um, so that's giving me a potential address to try to go recover evidence. Yeah, in the, it's in the garage. Uh, they, brought it over on a, they brought it over on a tow truck. They're now stating that the vehicle is in auntie's garage at her address. Look, young nigga, he got a picture with yet. Oh uh, man, they like the Pope in here, man. Look, everybody got stars right here. He said everyone got stars, like a five point star tattoo, like saying they're a blood gang member. These folks slimed out, everybody slimed, bro. Hey, listen, man, everything here is slimed out, bro. Everything. There's something about why he's selling a star and someone has a picture with Yak or something like a kid in there. It's really hard to understand. I'd say 80% of this shit. Of course, the referencing the names, um, referencing multiple people with stars, five point stars, saying everyone in, in the jail, Cobb County, is slime, and then someone having a YSL tattoo on their back. They're showing the pictures of the car they found in uh, Pee Wee Roscoe's aunt's garage. Yeah. 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 Ain't doing no more wrong stuff. Like, Andre, you think what I'm saying? Hold it down for me the way I know you. You got to turn up. I don't call anybody. They probably the big. You know, I took over the motherfucking IG. Okay. I haven't been able to understand Jeffrey once, really. I understand 90% of this shit, but they're just trying to show connection with Pee Wee and Thug. Spinning like a ceiling fan everywhere. Spinning like a ceiling fan everywhere. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, I mean, I mean, I've been friends with women in these four days. Shit. I said, let me call my brother. Yes, it was back and forth that night. Into this. So now, is that Thug's number or is his sister's number? Because I think his sister answered it, so that's a little confusing. In talking about the Free Roscoe campaign, through the course of your investigation, did you ever find an individual who launched the Free Roscoe campaign? I did. Okay. Who was that individual? Jeffrey Williams. I the 1990 phone number. Yes. Uh, I believe it's going to be um, one of Jeffrey Williams' relatives, female relatives, a sister. The last statement he said kind of sums it up. He needs paperwork to make it look legitimate and not, in his words, street stuff. Um, so he was trying to legitimize his association with YSL. Yeah, that's, that's pretty damning for this motherfucker, Jimmy Winfrey. Like, he's a dumbass. Do you know what gang is charging Yes. Why so? Mr. Steele has an issue. Here we go. The jury's not in the room anymore. I don't understand. From my perspective, Mr. Williams is not having fair trial. I cannot cross-examine Mr. Winfrey. This witness is telling us what he means by having things not look like street, uh, street items. Shit. I, I remember. Okay. Okay. Um, so. I don't understand how 
any of this is coming in. Amina Dayak is not a witness that the state is calling at all. I don't have a burden, you keep telling me, which I know the law, but you keep telling me that, but it feels like I have a burden. I have to clean all this mess up. If you, choose, if you choose to do so, sir. And, and, it's, and, and that's your, your characterization of it, so. The indictment, quote unquote, redacted is a farce. This thing has, I don't know if you looked at your copy, there's blanks here that identify Jeffrey Williams. I mean, you'd have to be, you'd have to be a deceased person not to realize that the indictment is charging Jeffrey Williams in it. And the state just goes on like, this is no big deal. You know, I have a big deal. This entire case should have witnesses who are competent to be cross-examined and they don't. I again object. This gentleman is testifying. He has no basis in saying what Jimmy Winfrey meant or didn't mean. The recording, because of your ruling, speaks for itself. He shouldn't be able to interpret it. And it was never even done. What the jurors won't know is that Amina Diab didn't give any paperwork at all. Okay. In fact, what they don't know is that Jeffrey Williams, the state won't probably play it, a recording with Jeffrey Williams where this detective asked Jeffrey Williams, does Jimmy Winfrey work for you as a road manager? And Mr. Williams laughs and said, are you ridiculous? I have real legitimate people. So all of this is the state of Georgia getting out a theory that is not based in fact, and it should not come into this courtroom. This entire, since, since the state has been allowed to say, does this help the investigation? This case has gone south. Maybe it was south already, but it has gone so south. I can't do anything. Those are all my objections. I'm moving for a mistrial. I have no idea why this gentleman got to say Amina Dyer works on the legitimate side of the business. We're presumed this. He has no right to say that. And then this indictment is all here saying under the Brown case, State versus Brown, which this honorable court agreed with, yet the state's using the indictment as a weapon. They're saying it says it in the indictment. Mr. Winfrey played Alfred. He's not testifying. You let it in as a statement against his penal interest. Well, that's only against him. He's not on trial. It can't be a co-conspirator statement because it is a statement that does not further any supposed conspiracy because it spills the beans. So. Bro, Brian Steele is such a good lawyer. He's moving for a mistrial, but he's not gonna. I respectfully ask the court to strike his, all of his testimony that goes into anything anyone else said and the investigation, and, and let's wipe this slate clean, and please, I just wanna go forward and have people to cross examine. This is the second time you've made the same argument, sir. I, I, I understand it, and it's your, it's your right to do so. All right, unless you have anything else, uh, Mr. Sharp. Jimmy Winfrey's plea being come, coming in as, as evidence against the rest of us when he is not taking the stand, but I'm gonna go one further than Mr. Steele. Their main complaint is that Jimmy Winfrey, they're not gonna be able to cross examine him, and they're bringing up Jimmy Winfrey because in their line of questioning they are asking about the indictment that Jimmy Winfrey pled to and the jurors are following what they're talking about they're asking about the indictment their indictment the plea the plea and then they say and what gang was involved and then the investigator is going to say YSL when we can all look at this indictment which shouldn't be coming in evidence in, in my estimation but if, if we're going to let it in over our objection at least let's be honest about what it says it doesn't say YSL he pled to the count the preamble say YSL he pled to does the preamble say YSL preamble does the preamble answer my question please Sure, the preamble does. But okay, not all right. Count. So you have to read. Okay, to. you have to read the preamble in conjunction That's, with the, with the, with the counts. counts. It's just like it's similarly situated to the to, to the preamble that you have in this indictment. Okay, but he pled to specific counts, Your Honor. Okay, but that the doesn't preamble. mean that the factual predicate of the of the preamble doesn't apply, right? Well, I I, I suggest. Uh, that, you, does no, it does apply or not. I disagree with you. Completely. Does it apply or not? No, it doesn't. Okay, it right. does not. He okay. pled to specific counts. Okay, all right. Your second argument as to this as well. Okay, anything else? Um, the judge is just like, all right, y'all have already argued this. So I don't give a shit. The judge doesn't give a fuck about this, dude. This is going to be one of the easiest appeals ever. And that's pretty much it for day 75. Complete shit show towards the end there. Hit subscribe. Love you guys. Peace out.